Well, hello and greetings once again. We are back again for one of our legal writing lunches, even though I believe it's a little bit early for lunch where most of you are. It is 12 noon where I am, so it's just about lunchtime for me. Um, but, but either way, uh, today we are going to be talking about negotiation. Uh, and it's a, it's a process that we use as lawyers all the time. Uh, and, and even more than just as lawyers, uh, we negotiate every day in our lives. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. This is a, a two-part class, so this will be continued next week. Uh, so we're only going to get about halfway through. Uh, this week, we're going to talk a lot about kind of some background on how negotiation works. Uh, next week, we'll we'll get into the, the mechanics of it a little bit more. Uh, let's see here. I'm letting people in. We're getting a few more people. That's nice. I was afraid we were just going to have two or three, but now we're up to 20. That's good. Uh, those of you that have been here before, you can, you can zone out for the next 10 seconds. If you haven't, uh, my name's Jeff Kaiser. Uh, I'm an uh, American lawyer and have been for about 15 years. I've worked on big cases and small cases, everything else in between. Uh, I currently am living in Vietnam, uh, right on the beach, which is now closed because they have found COVID in Vietnam as of uh, about three or four days ago. So we are back in lockdown and it's a little bit uncertain. Um, certainly we don't have the problems that India or the United States or so many other places have, but it doesn't look good for us right now. So, so keep your fingers crossed that this will all get better in the near future. I, I certainly hope it gets better for all of you because uh, I've been looking at the news and it doesn't look great. Uh, but so I'm thinking about you guys all the time and, and uh, I'm hoping that things get better here very much, very quick as well. Uh, before we start, um, if you would be so kind as to send me your name and email address and your law firm in the chat window, I do promise that we won't harass you too much with our emails, but uh, we may want to let you know what we're up to, what our classes are, and, and how we're working forward in, in this new world. Uh, also, I recommend highly that you check out our website. It's called legalwriting.eu. Uh, this is our homepage. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's a pretty cool homepage, I think, although I think we need to tweak it a little bit. Uh, but there's so much great information there for lawyers that are, are trying to write or work in English. Uh, from our blog that has entries all, all about a bunch of different topics, to our, our courses where you can find more information about what we offer and other resources. Uh, some really great stuff there. And as always, if you feel like writing part of our blog, please let us know. We'd love to help, help get you published on there and, and, and get your wisdom out to the rest of the world. Either way, welcome to our class today and to our website. I hope you check it all out. Those that have been here before know that I always like to start with a quote of the day. Uh, I find them somewhat interesting, either from a historical perspective or from a, uh, a humorous perspective. Today's, we're, since we're talking about negotiation, I thought I'd go right into the political and go right to John F. Kennedy's former president of the United States, his quote, let us never negotiate out of fear but let us never fear to negotiate. Very few people in the world had uh, Kennedy's gift with words. He was an excellent speaker and writer, and I, I certainly look up to him as, a, as something, that, as an ideal that we should all be working towards. All right, well, here we are. Uh, we're into our steps to legal negotiation. That's all that stuff in the past isn't, all as, as important as what we're getting into now, uh, but I'm, I appreciate your attention for it. Uh, why is negotiation important? <laughs> this seems like the, the question almost answers itself. 
Uh, but good negotiation, it makes you a better lawyer and your law firm a better law firm because it helps you build better relationships, or at least it can. Um, if you listen to me throughout this hour, I hope that it will help you build better relationships. Um, I think we've all been in negotiations where it ended a relationship. That is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to work together in our negotiations to, to really uh, have long lasting relationships. Good negotiation also tends to benefit the solution, the results, because if we negotiate well, we have long lasting, high quality solutions that, uh, that more, uh, that worse negotiators may end up with a, a bit of a, a breakdown. Uh, to that end, it helps us avoid future problems. The better that we can negotiate, the, the more we're able to avoid future concerns and future problems. So this is one of the impor more important things that we do as lawyers. Now, I know that you're all sitting there, or not all of you, maybe just some of you, saying, I don't negotiate at work. That's, that's what my boss does. He does all the, or she does all the deal making. I simply write memos or fix contracts. I don't negotiate. I say that's not true. I think we all negotiate all the time. Uh, we may not be negotiating a settlement, <laughs> for example, at least not yet, uh, but that's what we're working towards. And so I would like you to start thinking about how we negotiate uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this depends sometimes on, on where you live, um, and, and how negotiation works. Here in Vietnam and in a lot of parts of Asia, uh, at, the, at the local markets, we have, to make, we have to bargain to get the best price on things. Um, I, I don't know if that's how it works in India or where you're from, but that's just about every market I've ever been to. There's a little bit of haggling back and forth. So this is negotiation. Uh, so is uh, negotiating your salary when you start a job. Now, you may not realize that, and you, you may have not done a very good nego negotiation. That's what we're trying to give you the tools to do, to, to negotiate uh, so that you are better lawyers and better people. So uh, think about that. What I'd like you to do now is, is to just think about recent scenarios in your life when you've negotiated something. And I would like you to think about the goals or aims that you had when negotiating those situations. Now, we don't have time to get into this. There's too many people here now. There's 40 people plus me. And, and I, don't, I don't want you to, you don't need to write this and you don't need to, to discuss it with anybody. But just take a few seconds here and think about when you negotiated. Uh, while you're thinking, I'll give you one of mine, is that last night for dinner, my girlfriend and I disagreed on what we wanted. But through negotiation, we were able to end up at a, at a place where, where we were both happy with our, with our choices. So that was a good negotiation. So, so I'll give you just a couple seconds here to think about that, and, and then we'll, we'll move on. Great, fantastic. So I, I'd like to say that the goals of legal negotiation aren't that much different than the goals of any negotiation. Um, of course, when we're when we're talking in the law, we have to consider our clients and our our partners, our bosses, our law firm. So there's a little bit of difference there, but for the most part, negotiating is negotiating. What we want to do is to arrive at a compromise in a dispute that is that is most beneficial to the client, or maybe everyone, if that's at all possible. 
we want to achieve the best possible outcome for the client without having to go to court. L litigation is often, uh, a threat of litigation is often one of the tactics that we use in, in, in negotiating uh, before trial. Um, if, if we don't settle, we're going to go to trial, which will cost you more money and take more time. And um, I think we've, we've all seen this kind of negotiation, even, even if it's just in TV or the movies. We're also here trying to obtain enough information from the other side so that we can start thinking about a mutual solution, something that works for both of us. So here are a few concepts uh, uh, in negotiation, and I've always found that sometimes the vocabulary helps us. So here, uh, the vocabulary word is positions. And we have to realize that these are, are, are not always exactly what negotiators want, but it's what they say they want. It's the, it's what the other side is after, or at least what they say they are after. Uh, so these are what we want. Um, I wanted a pizza last night for dinner. That was my position. I was willing to move off of that position relatively easily, but, but that's what we're talking about. And any of you that have worked on settlement negotiations or contract negotiations, know that there's a little bit of flexibility in, in these, at least, at least there should be. Uh, so there's, there's a, a lot of give and take. Now, behind every position, the what we want are many interests. And an interest is the why we, we take the position we do. Now, uh, in my example, that's a little bit difficult because I wanted pizza because I wanted pizza. <laughs> I, I don't think I can say much more than why, uh, other than maybe it's been a while since I had pizza and that's what I wanted. Uh, in, in the law, these interests are a lot more obvious, whether it's um, my client wants to stay out of jail. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good why to take a position. Uh, so this is the, the, the basic needs that we're, that we're talking about in our, in our negotiation. Um, it's, while we often say that it's things like money, like a million dollars is an interest, that's not really true. The distinction is that the money represents power. And, and, and so that acquisition of power is our real interest. Uh, so knowing the why is, is the most important thing when we're talking about what is called win-win negotiating. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Uh, but there's basically two kinds of negotiation. There's win-win, where everyone's happy. And then there's win-lose, where one side is happy and the other side is unhappy. Like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. And guys, uh, I, I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, if you have any questions or any comments of any kind, I love to see your comments and questions in the chat window. Um, I'm able to answer them usually on the fly right now, but if not, I am more than happy to stick around after class to discuss as much as you would possibly want. Within reason, I, it is lunchtime over here and I will be hungry at some point. A BATNA. A BATNA is a term that, that not many people know unless they're really into negotiation. Uh, and what this means is it's the best result that a negotiator can get somewhere else if, if you don't come to an agreement. So let's say that I wanted to buy a car and I wanted to buy a new BMW. I personally can't afford a new BMW, but let's dream here today, shall we? Um, now I could go to one dealership and, and say, I have $50,000 for a car. And if they say, no way, 
Um, my BATNA would be the best option I could get somewhere else. Uh, I won't spend too much time on that just because we don't have too much time today. Um, and we're right about on schedule though so far. So that's nice. <laughs> The bottom line uh, is often called the reservation price. And this is um, either the lowest or the highest price that parties will agree to a deal. Um, so if you don't get to the bottom line or the reservation price, one side will walk away. No deal, no successful negotiation. Obviously, we want to avoid that. Um, and, and the hard part here is knowing what the other side's bottom line is. Sometimes they may tell you, which is helpful, but sometimes they may not tell you the truth. I've been through many negotiations where uh, opposing counsel said, this is the lowest that we will possibly go, only hours later, accepting something even less. Uh, so, so this is where we can think about positions and interests in our bottom line. Uh, bottom line represents the, the absolute lowest at least one side will go to. So when we're thinking about negotiation, I think we tend to fall into this trap of, of two people sitting at a big table talking back and forth and making a deal. And obviously, uh, a lot of negotiation does work out that way. That being said, um, negotiation can have a number of parties, uh, dozens, hundreds, if 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 you want to, if you want to, um, and I think that you could you can see this in any kind of a settlement agreement with with a case with more than one defendant. Uh, everybody has to agree to settle, and so there's a bunch of negotiation with parties on on a situation like that. Um, to me, I like to think of negotiation like it were a game of chess. Now, I'm not a very good chess player, but I know enough. Um, and that's the further that you can think in advance, the better negotiator that you will be. Finally here, always remember that negotiation is a voluntary exercise. When we do it at work, it doesn't always feel like that because um, what our boss tells us to do is rarely voluntary. But always realize that, that any party to a negotiation can stand up and walk away whenever they feel like it. Uh, there's nothing bad or wrong in doing that. Uh, in fact, it's a very common tactic when it comes to uh, negotiation, is to threaten to walk away or even to walk away with the willingness to be called back. Okay, now I know, I know how most of you dread my exercises. This one is very different. This one's kind of fun, I think, because negotiation, like many things, has norms that have been established around the world, and they're sometimes very different. Um, as you know, if you've been to any of my classes, I always love to talk about knowing your audience and the importance of knowing who you're communicating with. In the realm of uh, negotiation, it's never been more important. When we're negotiating with someone, the more we know about them, we, uh, about, their, about their interests and positions and their bottom line, the more effective we'll become. But what I wanna get at here is regional norms. So these are true falses. And now I will call upon you to help me out in the chat window, uh, whether you think this is true or false. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, we're getting, we're getting mixed answers. Okay, very cool. 
This is false. <laughs> now, I am more than aware that India is an incredibly diverse country with different cultures and hundreds of languages. So if this doesn't work everywhere, there may be some differences. Um, this is something I found on the internet. So I, I, I am not, uh, and this is not independent research on my part, uh, but I found that to be interesting. We had, uh, we had four falses and one true answer. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna be doing a little tour around the world throughout this class. Uh, we have, let's see, three more of these here, and I think I have another section later. What about this one? Oral commitments can represent legally binding contracts in Germany. Yeah, all right, everybody got this one right. So far anyway, this is true. And to my knowledge, this is true in most of the world. Um, this is certainly true in the United States. This is true all over Europe. Um, this is true in my Asian experience. Um, obviously, oral contracts have other issues, namely that proving them can be difficult, you know, proving them is difficult. Uh, but Germans especially uh, will expect all of your promises, whether oral or in writing, to be kept. Uh, so, so maybe if you're in Germany, uh, you can rely just a little bit more on an oral contract than you can in some places. Great. What about this one? Venezuela, all the way in, in South America. Oh, boy, I love it when I get conflicting answers. And I, I know, guys, I'm not expecting you to know this. I just think these are kind of fun. Do Venezuelans communicate quite directly? Yes, they tend to be more direct than other Latin Americans. And in fact, most Latin Americans are quite direct uh, in, their, in their negotiation tactics. So I, I had about 50-50 on that one, uh, right and wrong, so, so cool. One more on this group and then we'll get back to the fun stuff. Actually, I think this is the fun stuff. Decision-making in Ireland is often quite quick, assuming you're dealing with the right person. What do you guys think of that? True. <laughs> um, Irish organizations are often very hierarchical. Uh, so dealing with the right person can be the hard part. Finding the, the decision maker is the hard part, but they will not have these lengthy negotiations that many other cultures, including my own, tend to, tend to love. Okay, cool. Like I said, we're going to get back to those in a little bit, uh, but I have one task for you, and this is a fun task. It's going to take about five minutes. And I'm going to post a link in the chat window. And I hope, I really hope everybody goes to it. It's eight questions. It's a quick quiz. And it will tell you what kind of a negotiator you are. So I'm going to go on mute for about five minutes. And I will be back to discuss your answers with you. I do hope, like I said, this is one thing where I really hope that you, you click the link Go check it out, take the quiz, and we'll talk about the, there are six or eight different types of negotiator. And really, knowing the kind of negotiator you are can help you become a better negotiator.
Did everybody get a chance to finish this? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, you don't need to tell me or anyone else what your results are. That's that's for your own use. That's your your own own uh, own knowledge. Uh, but here, what do we have? Seven different types of negotiator. And whether you are a competitive or avoiding or cooperative or collaborative or principled or accommodating or compromising, uh, these are different types of negotiator. And there, there appears to be some overlap. The difference between cooperative and collaborative uh, and accommodating, really, are there's some overlap there, to be sure. But there are distinctions, and it's important uh, to think about this. Does anyone want to share what kind of negotiator they found out that they, they were? Maybe not. Um, collaborative. Good. Thank you. I, I'm not going to name names, I promise. So what a lot of the benefits um, of a collaborative negotiator, I put these in the chat window, everyone, so, and I will, uh, I'll, I'll go through everyone. I see an accommodating next, lots of collaboratives. That's why you're all such wonderful people to work with, isn't it? You're, you're working together. Uh, the, the benefits of a collaborative negotiation is that, is that you want to get the best deal for everyone and work closely with colleagues on your side. Um, uh, you, may, you may try to get all of your, uh, your side of things in a row, but not necessarily trying to make the, make the opposite side happy. Um, that's more of an accommodating. Uh, so, so it's really nice. Let's see, what was it? Another one was, that was posted was accommodating. Let's get there. The benefits of accommodating is that you build effective relationships and are very sensitive to the other party's needs. Accommodating negotiators can spend too much time worrying about the other party, leaving their client open to exploitation. I guess that makes a little bit of sense in a way. Um, let's see here. The, uh, what a lot of lawyers end up being, I'm, I'm with, with, with you on this one. I'm, I'm very much with you that, that working together in a collaborative or cooperative way is the best. But a lot of lawyers love the competitive negotiation. And that's the win at all costs. I think we've all seen negotiators that work like this, sometimes against us. And they are difficult uh, to deal with. They, they are, they're challenging, making them happy is next to impossible, but at the same time, you can see that they often get what they want. Um, as much as I dislike this person, you can see that someone like Donald Trump is a competitive negotiator who will, will kill your pet <laughs> in order to win. Um, I'm glad that most of you aren't like that. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not like that as well. But what I wanted to stress was that figuring out what style that you naturally have can help us develop our skills. There's no need to change and become a competitive negotiator or anything else. The that what we're doing here is noticing what we're good at and then we can become better at it. Okay, cool. So those are our styles of negotiation. And generally, as one negotiator, we can do more than one. Uh, we, like I said, there's a lot of overlap. And sometimes if, if you, you, if you want to get aggressive with me, I can play competitive with you. Um, so those are our styles. And I'll let you think about those. I don't know if we'll get into that anymore, but we can talk more about it later, maybe. Now, there are two forms of negotiation. Uh, negotiation. And yes, one of them is competitive. Uh, competitive is also called positional negotiation, distributive negotiation, assertive negotiation, and aggressive negotiation. 
Uh, in all of the topics that I've done for, for these classes, I've never seen so many uh, synonyms for things, so many same word, same con different word, same concept. But this is what basically win, win, lose negotiation. I'm going to go and get what I want, and I don't care how much pain you suffer through it. Integrative negotiation is, on the other hand, win-win, where we're trying to integrate our our needs, our 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 positions and our interests. The main difference here is that when we're, when we're talking about competitive negotiation, we have to expect that we won't have a relationship going forward. Um, I don't know if you've ever gone to a store or uh, bought something and walked out saying, I will never buy something from that place again. They were, they were aggressive and mean and, 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 and all of that. That's competitive negotiation. That's, that's I'm going to win, you're going to lose, and I don't care how you feel about it. <laughs> uh, we can see in competitive negotiation a few things that help us identify it. First off, the parties don't know each other very well. Uh, that's probably why they have short relationships if, if they don't end up knowing each other very well. Um, and they're unlikely to work together in the future. Uh, when we're doing competitive negotiation, the actual discussion is typically over a limited number of things. So it may be just price. If you go to buy a car, uh, that, that's where we're, we're not talking about expansive issues. We're talking about the price and, I don't know, maybe the color. Who knows? <laughs> so I, I don't think we're going to have time to get into this discussion, but I'll just talk about uh, some of the advantages and, and then some of the disadvantages. I will give you just a few seconds to look at this slide. Probably the most important thing here is the speed of the negotiation. Um, I think we've all been part of those, those negotiations where, where somebody gets bullied and it happens really fast and, 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 and you in and out done. <laughs> That's probably a competitive negotiation unless you're incredibly lucky. <laughs> Some of the, the disadvantages of competitive negotiation are that there's a, a level of stress and mistrust that may, may become part of it. Uh, the other side may actually retaliate by, by being equally competitive. If you're trying to buy a $50,000 car for $30,000, they may raise the price to $80,000 just to just to put you in your place. Uh, and agreement is harder sometimes unless you're already working towards the same goal. Okay, here are a few tactics, and we'll talk about tactics a little bit later. This is a lot of text, so I'm gonna let you read some of it. Uh, but things like early anchoring, fainting, or making misleading concession patterns. I'll give you 60 seconds to look this over. And just because we have another slide of these tactics, I'll let you, I'll let you keep reading. Uh, splitting the difference is a great one. Uh, ultimatums, uh, where, where you say you'll take it or leave it. This is my final offer. Uh, 
again, this is not the best kind of negotiation typically for lawyers. Sometimes it is, sometimes it is. But I like to come at a, from a place of cooperation and working together. Those are the, the negotiations that I've, I feel are especially successful. Uh, okay, anyway, that's enough about competitive. So let's move to integrative, uh, where both parties are trying to reach a mutually beneficial outcome. Uh, and that's not necessarily the, just sealing the deal. Just making a deal is not necessarily the outcome. Uh, but we're trying, to, it, we're trying to make it a win-win situation where both parties walk away saying, that was a great experience. I want to do more than that. Here, the parties generally know each other. And they're, they're generally more likely to interact in the future. I'm sure if, if you're making contracts between corporate uh, clients, these are generally not one-time only deals. And so, so we work together like we have in the past uh, to make a better future. <laughs> that sounds a little bit lofty, I think, but it came out that way. Okay, we'll skip that. Here are a few of the advantages. Uh, and, and a lot of it is just the, the sense of working together. Uh, making a good climate to discuss things is one. I hate to sum up all of the advantages with it just brings good vibes, <laughs> but, but it does. It makes, it makes everybody approach the negotiation with a much more open mind and open heart, just as important. The disadvantages are, are big and, and, and deserve a little bit of discussion. When you're trying to be delicate and get the best deal for everyone, you may not get the actual best available deal for your client. That's certainly bad <laughs> because our clients, they want us to get the best deal possible. Uh, they may see us being nice and gentle with the, uh, with the other side as being soft. Um, that's not necessarily the case, is it? But the way that we present it may come across as that we don't care so much, that we, we just want a, a deal to be done and, and our client isn't getting that elevated position that, that they like to get uh, generally. So here's a few tactics that we like to use here. Again, I will let you read this just because it's a bit of text, but we uh, focus on interests not their positions. That's important because um, if we're limited to talking about the what of, of a deal and we ignore the why, it's like we're looking at a, a 2D image in a 3D world. Uh, the why, why we do things that are intense in our, our, our motives are always the, the number one thing to consider. Uh, they're hard to just hard to find out sometimes, but but always try to get to the why our, our clients want to make this deal. Here are a few more. Okay, I know I said I wasn't gonna get into the tips today and that's next week, but I have a tip or two in here. Um, I know I'm talking about these two styles of, of negotiation as, as in they're entirely distinct, very separate. But we need to look at this kind of as a middle ground. It'll, there's a lot of gray area here. And, and so we can't be too soft and too uh, collaborative or, 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 or competitive. We can't be too either, either side. We want to be 
we always have to be a little competitive, right? But we don't need to, you know, get in people's faces and get aggressive. So, so don't think of these as this is my one path and I can't mix these two up. Of course you can. Negotiation is a wide world of experience and you can do almost anything there. So, so think about what works and what doesn't. And in my experience, you'll want to pick and choose a little bit of, of a little bit of this and a little bit of that when you develop your own negotiation style. So here's a quick chart <laughs> of, of, of our real differences here. Uh, I know we just covered this and, and I know you'll get these PowerPoints later. So, so I don't need to, to go into too much detail, but they are very different. And, and they allow for a lot of, of, it's the fun stuff that we do as lawyers. We can play with negotiation using all of these variables and it, and hopefully it works to our, to our interests or, or our clients interests to be, to be more accurate. All right, pop quiz time. <laughs> Thank you for helping last time, but let's see what you know about Taiwan. Okay, people are saying true. Um, I personally have only been to an airport in Taiwan, so I have very little experience and I've never negotiated there. It's true, good work everybody. Everybody got it right. Um, so an individual enjoys less respect and is not taken so seriously. Uh, so if you're negotiating in Taiwan, send the whole law firm, everybody gets a business trip. Sounds good, right? All right, here's another one. Is anyone brave enough to take a guess? <laughs> All right, people are saying, oh, I'm getting buried answers here. Okay, it's a mix. False here. Um, and this one is a little bit tricky because it, in Canada, the law requires all public documents to be printed in both languages. Um, and I would, I would say if you were in Quebec or Montreal giving a presentation, it would make sense to include the French versions just because it would make, make it easier for, for the people. Uh, that being said, in Canada, English is spoken throughout, so I can't imagine it being a problem. All right. What about this one? This is our last one, everyone. Oh, my goodness. This one is false. <laughs> and I can see that in other contexts too. If you as a businessman start with the lawyers, I could see that being as a sign of that this will be a hard negotiation. Um, I, I've, I've been to Italy, but I, again, I've never practiced there, so I'm not sure exactly how accurate that is, but the internet never lies, does it? So it must be true. All right. Hey, guys, we are, we are getting close to done here. I hope that makes you happy. But what I want to do here is, is if I can get some help, we'll, we'll go through this. Uh, and we'll try to figure out our, our strategy, our style, and our tactics that we would probably use in these circumstances. So for one, I'll, I will help you with the first one since it's a little bit complex. Uh, purchasing a souvenir from a street vendor on vacation. 
Now, uh, we wouldn't expect to have a long-term relationship with uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the vendor, right? This is a, a a quick one. So I would say that this is more of a uh, a distributive kind of a strategy. Um, and I'd so I'd argue that this is a bit of a competitive discussion because it is all about getting the lowest price for me and the highest price for them. That, that's, those are the, our interests. Is I want to spend as little money as possible. They want to get as much money as possible. Um, what's our tactic here? We could use any number of tax, tactics, to be honest. I think that, that we could do just about anything. Um, one, poten one potential one would be uh, to consider an ultimatum or to walk away because you know, a take it or leave it type thing is very common in those, those situations. Uh, does that make sense to everybody? Does anyone want to take a chance or take a, take a shot at that second one? I do understand this is probably a little bit difficult without all of those terms and everything that I've discussed earlier. And I'm sure if you had your, if you had notes or a PowerPoint in front of you, uh, you'd be going back right now. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely understand that. <laughs> I think Matthew has the best answer. Just keep the wife happy. In fact, yes, it's a, I'll give you my motto for life. My motto for life, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so yes, I, I, in, in many ways, I would agree with you. <laughs> that, that, is, that, is, that is accurate. <laughs> However, in, in terms of negotiation, we will want to have a more uh, integrative uh, discussion. And maybe we want to be a little bit more cooperative. Now, log rolling is something I've never mentioned before. It's, it's, it's a tactic in negotiation, a tactic that if you are so brave as to come back, um, we will discuss more next week. But log rolling is basically a quid pro quo. You give me this, I'll give you that. Uh, in this circumstance, it would probably be like, um, I will let you watch, I will watch the romantic comedy with you as long as I get pizza for dinner, uh, or 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 the flip side, whatever. Our last one, um, I can tell. I can tell it's getting late in the day, and this is a little bit tricky for people to 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 deal with. I think, uh, and so that's my bad. I apologize, but here. Again, this is probably a a win-win kind of negotiation uh, where we're being very competitive. This is not that different from the first one. Uh, however, we may want to have, use a different tactic. Something like splitting the difference is an amazing tactic to use in a lot of negotiations, especially like corporate con contra contract negotiations, where if I say I'm willing to spend $5,000 on something and you're willing to sell it for $10,000, uh, we meet in the middle and say, why don't we make it $7,500? That's a great tactic uh, for, for all kinds of negotiation. Well, maybe not all kinds. I, I might have overstated something. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, but that's what I have for you today, and I hope that you will come back next week for more talks on negotiation. Now, fortunately, we have a few minutes left over here, and I am happy to answer any questions about anything legal English related. Uh, we can, I'm happy to talk about negotiation. Don't get me wrong. But if there's anything else, if you have a, a real world question that you can't quite figure out, now's your chance to hit me with it and, and see if I can come up with a good answer. Um, if not, um, I will be back here in six days and 23 hours for another session. Uh, I think next week's is a little bit more, 
uh, I don't know. So maybe a little bit more fun. Uh, we have more more pop quizzes about how negotiation happens around the world, and 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 some fun info, I think. Um, but like I said, um, if you don't have any questions from me, then we're done here today, and I would recommend that you get back to your busy lives as lawyers. Um, like I said, um, over the past few months that I've been giving these classes, uh, you've all been under lockdown, and I haven't. Uh, as of yesterday, I am now under lockdown as well, so so wish me luck. <laughs> um, I, I will always wish you all the, the best of luck for not just yourselves, but your colleagues and your family and your friends and your neighbors, every, everyone that you deal with. I hope you stay safe and secure, and the only way we can get through 2021 is together. So uh, I like to think of you all as my friends, and... I hope you think of me the same way. In the meantime, get out of here. Go have some fun. Uh, get your work done. And, and I will see you next week.